Okay, going back the other way. You'll notice I've said here integration involving inverse trig. As far as extension one goes, they won't actually integrate inverse trig. We'll see how to deal with it when we look at our extension two techniques. So really, it's just the reverse of the differentiation. So if we see a derivative like so, dx over the square root of a squared minus x squared, which is one of the standard integrals that does appear on our uh, sheet, then it's the inverse sine of x on a. It's always quoted as the inverse sine of x on a. But if you think about it, it could also be minus the inverse cos of x on a. Um, when we later on look at simple harmonic motion, we'll see why sometimes we take inverse sine and other times we'll take inverse cos uh, to make the calculations easier, basically. So you can choose either. We usually pick inverse sine because, of course, that's the, the positive one. And the other standard integral, then, is dx on a squared plus x squared. But again, be careful with this one. There's a 1 on a out the front, inverse 10 of x on a. So let's have a look at some examples. Uh, there we are. It's straight in the form a squared minus x squared. So I know a, in this case, is 2. So we just get inverse sine x on 2. Uh, dx on 9 plus x squared. Well, in this case, a is 3, but remember, inverse tan, 1 on a out the front. Uh, here's a definite one. a, in this case, is the square root of 2. So subbing in, we get inverse sine of 1 on root 2 minus inverse sine of 0. I guess that's why we, a couple of lessons ago, just did all that work on how do we manipulate these inverse sine functions. Uh, we want exact values. So it'll be pi on 4 minus 0, which is pi on 4. As far as extension 1 goes, you're not going to get an integral um, like this unless it's in this format where it says, you know, differentiate this, hence go and do that. It's pretty much just going to be linear functions otherwise. But as I say, extension 2, we'll see how we handle the other ones. We won't worry about it now. Um, so let's do this. We differentiate the inverse sine e to the x. Um, the hence integral sort of is a bit of a hint anyway. You're expecting some sort of multiple of that because otherwise the question doesn't make sense. So differentiate e to the x, we get e to the x over the square root of 1 minus the function squared. And sure enough, we get the what we're looking to integrate. So if I differentiate inverse sine e to the x, then uh, we get e to the x on the square root of 1 minus e to the 2x. Therefore, logically, if we integrate e to the x on the square root of 1 minus e to the 2x, we must get inverse sine e to the x. Subbing in 0, and then subbing in minus the log of 2. Now, e to the log cancels, but at this stage it's minus log. So we would bring the power in. So it's e to the log of 2 to the power of minus 1. e to the log would cancel. 2 to the power of minus 1. So we're saying a half. Inverse sine of a half. So inverse sine of 1, pi on 2, minus inverse sine of a half, pi on 6 gets us our pi on 3. Now, this one's not a squared minus x squared, you'll notice, because it's 9x squared. So we want to make it look like the standard integral. So I'm going to factorise out the 9. But when I factorise out the 9, remember it's in a square root sign, so I'm really factorising out 3. So it becomes 3 times the square root of 4 ninths minus x squared. It's now in the form a squared minus x squared, where a is 2 thirds. So I can say, well, a third I'll bring to the front of the integral. And then it'll be inverse sine x on a. So x on 2 thirds, invert 3 on 2. OK. So 1e. We've had a look at differentiation. Now let's do integration.